In this video, I'm going to talk about some fundamental concepts of linear algebra and the relationships among them. Let me first describe spaces. A point is a zero-dimensional space. A line is a one-dimensional space containing infinite number of points. A plane is a two-dimensional space containing infinite number of lines. What are the characteristics of a plane? As you can see in figure 1, a plane is thin and flat. If we are in this plane, we can never know these characteristics. The reason that we know them is because we live in a three-dimensional space, and we can draw a third axis perpendicular to the two axes of this plane, as shown in figure 2. From solid geometry class, we know that if a line A is perpendicular to two crossing lines in a plane, then A is perpendicular to all lines in that plane. So if we project this plane to the new axis, we can get a single point on that axis. This proves the thinness and the flatness of a plane. We can extend this idea to four-dimensional space. A three-dimensional object looks solid to us, but in four-dimensional space, it is flat and thin. In the four-dimensional space, the axis that is perpendicular to all three axes of the three-dimensional space can be drawn. Then this axis is perpendicular to all lines in that three-dimensional space. If we project the 3D space to that axis, we get a single point. This proves the flatness and thinness of the three-dimensional space in a four-dimensional space. In that four-dimensional space, one can see every atom of a three-dimensional object, and nothing blocks the view because the object is flat. In high dimensional space, any subspace which has a dimension greater than 2 is called a hyperplane. So the three dimensional space in four dimensional space is a 3D hyperplane. Now let's talk about a linear equation. A linear equation has a general form as this a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x2 plus all the way to a n x n equals zero. A specific example is negative two x one plus x two minus three equals zero. It represents a line in a two-dimensional space with x one x two as two perpendicular axes, as shown in Figure three. It also represents a plane in a three-dimensional space as shown in figure 4. In this case, you can think of this equation as negative 2x1 plus x2 plus 0x3 minus 3 equals 0. Another example is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus 1 equals 0. It represents a plane which is a two-dimensional subspace in a three-dimensional space. It is also a three-dimensional hyperplane in a four-dimensional space if we write it as x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus 0 x4 plus 1 equals 0. In general, a linear equation represents a n minus 1 dimensional hyperplane in a n-dimensional space. Then how to represent a n minus 2 dimensional hyperplane in n-dimensional space? A system of two linear equations represents a n minus two dimensional hyperplane. For example, a system shown here. Uh, this system contains two equations and four variables. It represents a two dimensional plane in a four dimensional space. This two dimensional plane is the intersection of two three dimensional hyperplanes represented by the two linear equations. If we extend this idea with three linear equations, we get a line 
and with four linear equations, we get a point, which is the solution of a four-variable linear system in algebra. In multivariable calculus, one way to differentiate a function according to one of the variables, for example, xk, we assume that the rest of the variables are constants. This is not for convenience. You have to make sure that they are constants, because only when they are constants, you can generate a two-dimensional plane that is perpendicular to all axes except x, k, and y. And only in that space, single variable calculus holds. This two-dimensional plane can be represented by a system shown here. Notice that this system contains n minus 1 equations, and they are in a n plus 1 dimensional space, since there is an extra variable y. Till now, we have seen how to generate a lower dimensional hyperplane by intersecting multiple higher dimensional hyperplanes represented by linear equations. There is another way to generate hyperplanes. Let's go back to our geometry class. In geometry class, we have learned that a line can be determined by two points. A two-dimensional plane can be determined by three points. How many points can determine a three-dimensional hyperplane? Since a three-dimensional hyperplane in a four-dimensional space can be represented by a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 plus a4x4 equals 0. It seems that we have five constants to determine. But in fact, we can de divide zero, a0 zero, on both sides of the equation, resulting in 1 plus a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 plus a4x4 equals zero. And only four constants needs to be determined. To determine four constants, we need four equations. Each x1, x2, x3, x4 forms a point. So we need four points to generate four equations. This means four points determines a three-dimensional hyperplane. In general, n points determines a n minus one dimensional hyperplane in a from the n points. Then connect it with the rest n minus one points we get n minus 1 crossing lines. So n-dimensional hyperplane can be determined by n crossing lines. If you get a bit confused by the word determine, we mean if we fix n crossing lines in a space. A n-dimensional hyperplane containing these lines do not have any freedom to move. To represent a line in n-dimensional space with linear equations is complicated because we need a system of n minus 1 equations. Are there any easier ways? Yes, we can use vectors to represent those lines. A vector in an n-dimensional space is shown on the screen. A line along this vector can be represented by end points of kv for k belongs to r. Uh, note that the line has to go through point 0, 0. This is a limitation of representing lines based on vectors. But in many situations, this is not a problem. Two crossing lines determines a two-dimensional plane. Therefore, a two-dimensional plane can be represented by endpoints of a linear combination of two vectors, namely a1v1 plus a2v2, where a1 and a2 are scalars. In general, the m-dimensional hyperplane intersecting the origin can be represented by a linear combination of n vectors in m-dimensional space, where m is greater than n. We say that the n vectors span an n-dimensional space, or a hyperplane. 
if m equals n, then the vectors span the complete space. After understanding the two ways to create a hyperplane by either linear equation or vectors, let's look back at a system of linear equations. For example, the linear equation system showing here. Our goal is to solve for x1, x2, and x3. Each of these equations is a plane. The first two planes intersect to a line, and then intersect with the third plane to a point. The point is the solution. We can also look at this system from a totally different perspective as a vector equation. The left side of the equation is a linear combination of three vectors in a three-dimensional space. The linear combination spans the whole 3D space. Namely, every point is reachable by the combination of the three vectors with appropriate coefficients, namely x1, x2, and x3. The right side of the equation is a vector in that space. So the goal of solving the original linear system becomes figuring out the correct linear combination of the three vectors on the left to reach the vectors on the right. In the next video, I'm going to talk about when a linear system has a single solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Thanks for watching.